G'day, how you going? Are you Naplus here? You're an acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my YouTube channel. There's the size of my canvas that I'm using in this tutorial today, and you'll also see some colors running up the screen there. Now it's kind of a planetary orb dark starry kind of vibe going on here something that looks quite beautiful and different i'll bring you over here and just show you where i'm laying things out all right so let's get right into it i've got my horizon line quite low down here and the mid-ground tree line is fluffing up and down different heights there but this line you do not want when you're painting a painting like this you don't want everything on that line you want things on it and with in front of it as well to create perspective within your work. Now down here I've got my soft bodied titanium white and I need a little bit of retarder mixed with that because I want to be able to just condition the canvas where I paint the night sky area so I can do a bit of blending. And we'll just get this sky crisscross in like that down to those tree lines there. Now this part here this is just a bit getting it on. So you're pushing it into the tooth, spreading it around. Don't worry about being too exact with your brush strokes yet. And just push it to the edge where you want it. Okay, now you've got it everywhere where you want it. Just finally make sure it is. And then come to the tip of your putter on a brush if you're using this method and just stroke it left and right. And we've got a nice even thin film of that white retarded paint so whatever colors we put on there they are going to blend nicely now just to make things easier i'm just gonna make a phalo blue sky and then i'll add some darker bits in it as i go so we'll get this i've cleaned that putter on a brush and we'll simply get our sky in there okay so i'm going to crisscross that up to the top because i want the top dark but i'm going to add darker to this and i'll bring it down to the horizon line with the brush it's going to come a little bit lighter so be it now i'm coming to the tip of this brush just to push all that color around and now i'm going to come to the tip of the brush and then stroke that left and right so it's even brush strokes throughout that color there keep playing with it push it around where you feel you need to no rush, remember, don't rush your work. Just take your time, and if you've got to slow down and correct something, that's all part of the process of that art piece. Okay, I'm grabbing the dioxine purple on both sides of my putter on a brush so I can stamp in where I want my darker areas. So I want this corner dark. I'm going to stamp it on and radiate across the top a bit. So easy to do, look at that. I'll turn the brush around now and I'll come to the other side and get some of this dancing across the top and over this corner here. There we go. And have a quick look, analyze it. I might want some, I don't know, something banding across here as well. Just adding a bit of dark, stamping it on, look at that. Now I'll simply wipe this brush. So I'll just grab my kitchen towel, get all the bulk off there. And I'll start on this side first, just pulling it into the sky. I'll wipe the brush again, go to this side, pull it into the sky, wipe the brush again, come into the middle. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now I'm wiping the brush again now I want to kind of get this a lot more heavier pushed and that's how easy it is to get that happening now down the bottom here I'm slowly coming a bit lower using the tip of this putter on a brush and I'm just massaging those colors together now I'm just going to pick up some more of this craft paint on both sides of that brush I just wiped it, I haven't washed it. And maybe from the bottom here, I'll get it on there, push it in, push it in, and then I'll start bleeding that up, just so the horizon area, it's got that purpley dioxine in there and it's kind of added a nice lighter vibe down on the horizon line. 
Now I've got titanium white out of the tube, I'm just picking that up on my hog bristle fan brush, chiseling it on there so we can get some space haze. So I know this is going to be covered here, so I want something, I might just loop it around there, so I'll just do this, twisting it on, come off there like that. Picking up my kitchen cloth again, and I want to give this turmoil, watch I'll show you what I mean. See how it's mixing? I've got to wipe it because it's quite thick on the brush and the edges I want to kind of really lace out into infinity like that. There we go. You can do this. If it's your first time it just means you've got to practice. And if you're watching somebody do something and you think, my God, they make it look so easy, that's just because they have practice as well. And that's all that is. You can make it look easy by practicing every procedure you want to do in your art. Now I'm, I'm twisting on like this, on and, on and off, and like this, creating little turmoil and laces of cottony mist coming off this vibe of white paint here within these colors here. Just like that. Come right off the painting as you go. Don't stop at the edge of the painting. I've got a little bit of Indian yellow. I want to add a bit of Indian yellow with it. Just to try and make up some depth in there. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but we'll give it a go. I'll sit it down. And then I'll just finish it off with some white. And I'm going to add the yumminess right across that colour that I put there. There. And a bit here. That'll do. And do the same thing, smear it out. You can give this a red vibe, a bluer vibe, whatever. I've just chose to use this colour because it's just what I picked up. It's what we do in our art journey. We're our own individual. We pick our own colours. We go our own path. Creates our style. Now, I want to put some stars in this sky before we move any more forward. So the best way to flick stars, in my opinion, is this. You've got your titanium white. I've got a toothbrush. Now, that toothbrush is a flat-faced toothbrush. It's not a concave one. See, I've just put some water onto the palette there like that. Get your brush, your, your whole face, the flat face of the brush, not like this, the whole lot like that, and get it in the water, okay? Just dampen it a bit, just a bit. Now start bringing this paint into that water. At the end of it all, there's a big blob there, but you don't want that. You want it all faced with flickable paint. Get just even practice this procedure on cardboard or something. Now I want to, I'll go over here first. Yeah, I'll intensify the stars in here first. Like that, in that band of smoke I put there. Now it's coming off, but I feel it's not inky enough. So I'm just going to slowly add more water to it as I'm reloading the, the toothbrush. Come over here, yeah that's better. See I just added more water. Now I'm concentrating around this bit here. So easy to do. Okay, now I want to get my stars in the night sky. I want some over here. Load up some more. I might have a nice concentrated bit there somewhere, just something like that. And see how I can, look at that, it's, I can go on for days flicking stars like this from this toothbrush. So I've got my script liner, I've just dampened it. Now I want to just stab it into the paint like that, that's all you need to do, stab it in and you watch. 
you can dry your sky now if you feel you want to, if it's gonna, yeah, look, see, you can get some bigger, why I stabbed it in, I'll just show you here, like I want a bigger one here, like, boom. Bang, you can get them in. Now I'm gonna dry the painting so as they're not sort of brushing in. So we've dried it now, so we can put in a few, like watch, I've just stabbed it into that paint and you can just stamp it on like that, boom. I'll need a little bit more. Okay, we'll put some over here, just some heavier ones. And that's how easy it is to get your heavier ones in there. Now I do want a, a few shaped ones as well. Let's say one here. I want to make it quite large in the middle. And then I just want to gingerly flick it out. a little bit on both sides. This one here, that I, the first one I put on, I might just give him a, a north, south, east and west type of vibe. I got a pencil and I pretty much did an arc around here with the pencil, it's just lightly there. Now I wanna get that a lot perfect with my tape. And if you don't have tape or whatnot, you can simply cut yourself a large circle out of a paper, some paper and make a template. Now I'm gonna just simply go around with this. Now what I wanna do is just make sure there's no square corners on this arc. So I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it and it feels a little bit flat there. So I'm just going to Get that a bit more rounder. And now what I'll do is I'll just grab tape and come on the outside of that line, creating my arc, just like so. I'll get this done all the way around. Just because you can bend it that way, but it's hard to bend this side of the tape. So that's why I'm doing it in in little footsteps like this. And anyone can do this. Okay, so I've got that all the way on. Ian, can we watch you pull that inner tape off? Yeah, sure, so we'll pull this one off now because we don't need this. And here again, you can still fine tune that arc. If it looks a bit squarish, take your time and get it reasonably arky. Okay, I'm happy with that. There's probably are some bits, but I'll leave it for now. I want to grab it and put her on a brush and this craft paint again. It doesn't have to have the retarder in it, just something to prime that area up there. So push that on. Now just get this crisscrossed on and bring it to the edge of your tape there like so. Don't worry if colours start to bleed because this is going to be blend it anyway. Bring it around there like so. Okay. Now I'm just going to use a simple basic phalo blue. So I'm getting both sides of that phalo blue onto the brush. That white paint is still damp up there. And we'll just do whatever. I want to... This is fun and easy to do. Get a bit more on your brush. Now this is our planetary thing. It can be any sort of brush stroke you want it to be. Now have a look at it. We don't want it to look flat. We want it to have some kind of sphere shape to it. So I will grab a bit of the dark phalo blue and I'll just try and Let's say over here now, stamp it on, like so. There we go. Wipe your brush on a cloth, 
just by getting all that off there. You can even use a sponge for this. I've just opted to use me putter on a brush. And I want to just simply do that. Okay, I'm grabbing a fan brush with some titanium white. And on the opposite side, I just want to put some glare. Okay. And from about here, I want to just stamp on some glare. Get some more. Stamp it on there. Let it fade away up there. Off the, come off onto the tape. There we go. Now grab yourself a blending brush. So what I want to do now is just kind of keep it hard against the tape and let it just tone down into the, the blue colour of the um, globe, the planet, the star, the roundness of it all there. Now you need a cloth. See it, my paint's building up on my blending brush. I'm stamping it, stamping it. Coming around, there we go, stamping it on, getting it right to the edge of that tape. Okay, now I can control where I want that glare. I can see where the edge of my tape is. And I just want to merge that a little bit more, not so hard where it's meeting the blue. I really want it to taper out. I really hope we get to see you pull that tape off, Ian. Yeah, now a trick with the tape, I started from here and it's all overlapping. So where you start, that's where I'll start peeling it off and it'll all come off in one go. If I start from this side, I'm gonna be pulling it off in bits and bobs and it takes longer than it needs. But let's pull this tape off. We'll start where we started from. Now I do see a little bit of white that bled through the tape there, that's fine. We can get a little detail brush and simply fix that up. So just grabbing a flat brush and just push your planet color back out over that white line. And this is where you can, if you feel it's a bit squarish, you can shape it a bit better. And this bit here, we need to get it just to kill that white edge there. And that's why it's important to take your time in an art piece because we're turning these little iffity effity bits into better looking art. Now I've got my I've got my dagger brush actually. I'm just picking up the titanium white on here and I just want to, I don't know, scatter in. The paint's still wet, but I'm just going to kind of scatter in some kind of um, continent shapes here and there, just like that. And just scrumble one side. Or actually pick another brush to scrumble the actual side in. But we just kind of, I'll use another brush. So, because that one's, because it's got the, the loaded paint on it, it's kind of pushing it where I don't want it to go. So pretty much just do something like this. I'm kind of creating uh, a continent or like a sort of a vibe of a, a country mass, land mass on top of this here, just like doing that. Oh, I tested it down there, that's why that bit's there, but you won't see that. So you do a bit at a time, push it into the inside of the country, we'll call it a country. Okay, just some more. Just make it up as you go. It's quite simple to do. It's knowing what to do is the hard bit. You can even make up whatever country you want. 
and this is just simple white might put another bit here let's have a look I've just looked in my monitor we might need something just out here on its own but follow the shape of your sphere there like that let me have a look yeah that's looking all right out there will be more linear because they're on the folding side and see I'm just wiggling it on and scrumbling it in it's don't feel intimidated just out here I think it's important you get some long ones right near the edge just like that you know you don't want to put big long wide ones out there because your eyes not looking at the whole lot they'll gradually come wide as they come around something like that and just scramble it in see now you might feel you're going to ruin it pushing all that white paint on and doing this but when you know what to do, you won't feel that way. Okay, I'm happy with that. I can keep going on and on and on, but that'll do. You get the gist of what I'm trying to say. Okay, that's dry. I've masked up the horizon area. I'm gonna use this brush. I just picked this brush because I like the way the point of it looks. So that's just the one I'm choosing to use. Okay, I'm just gonna use phalo blue. I've wet the brush a little bit so it's not bone dry. I just wanna stamp in the tips of this so as I can get the shape of the foliage that I'm looking for. So I've masked the horizon line and I'm gonna get this brush and I wanna stamp on the shape of my trees. Try and get the top shape stamped on as I go along. I might have to give it a couple of coats. So here I'm just showing you now, just getting the tops of it to the look that I want with this brush before I come back with highlights. So I'm gonna go all the way along the tape here crossing the bottom of the planet and just keeping the tops of those trees nice and open there we go I've just dried it give it another coat just to darken it up now I'm using dioxine purple just getting it stamped into the tip of this brush and going along the tape just keeping the bottom dark and slowly radiating up through the color of the phalo blue that I put here just bringing it up so we'll have depth at the bottom of all these trees that were just stamped on. There we go, I've just changed the light so you can see. Gonna give this a dry now. Now I've got the dioxine purple and the phalo blue here. Just putting some of the dioxine in there and picking up some of the, I'll just use the craft white now, and I wanna get my highlight color going. Now I want to start up here creating my trees within here start up there and bring it down into that dark just like that up here start up here twist your brush around bringing it down into that dark how's it looking in the monitor okay here above the darkness and then bring it down into that very deep dark there and we're going to simply do this all the way along these are the mid-ground trees but these are the the background mid-ground trees so we're going to have some other ones just sitting in front of them well, I added more white but um I didn't mix it enough so you can see the dots of it there so I might have to get the darker colour and push that back down. Right above there, above it and then bring it down into that. There we go. Now I've dried the canvas, I'm picking up more white and putting into that 
pile that I made there out of the phalo and dioxine. Getting it well mixed onto this brush so I've got a good stamp. And simply, let's see, let's go right up to the top. Just gingerly highlight some of these bushes here. I'll stop about here and have a look in my monitor. Yeah, that's it. I don't want to go any more than that. It's so easy to overdo stuff. That will do. We'll grab the dark. We'll even grab black now and just line in some trunks. So I have some carbon black on my brush and I'm just starting from here and I'm just putting in some trunks. Now, I'm not sure if the camera's picking all this dark color up, but I can definitely see it in real life. Can we watch you pull the tape off again? Okay, we're gonna get this tape off there and we can start mapping in the lower half of the painting. Just get rid of any ridge of paint that might be there. Now I've got my titanium white, it's a free flow white, this one here, and I wanna, I'll just use the white first and then I'll put the tinted colors in it appropriately and accordingly. So we'll get it to here. Now we don't want that to be a dead straight line, so we can sort of swoop it, come down and come off again. And then I'll just map all this in. And then this can dry as well. So I just want to come across here, maybe get a nice sweeping bit coming uphill there a little bit. Keep it nice and sharp though, because it's pushing all that back in the background. Come back down. some more. Yeah, I want that a little bit higher there so as I can come down to there. Now I wouldn't mind some of this way back inside those trees there as well so we'll try and sneak some snow in there if we can and if you can't we'll just simply you don't have to. So I've simply got a smaller flat brush and where are we? We'll get about here somewhere. Let's try and just push something way back there. I've got a tree trunk there, so. I want to see how this is looking. Now any tree trunks you cover up doing this, don't even let that be a bother to you because you can always put them back. We're trying to create depth right in this snow here. Getting it right back to a degree. Now I simply want to shadow this snow. I've got some Prussian blue down here and I want to mix that with me white. Yeah, that's kind of a grey shadowy colour, I'm liking that. And starting from here, I want to get bits tiptoed through. And don't worry, if you kill too much of the white, you simply put that back. And I want to, hang on, come through here, get some of that in there. I want to scallop 
long dark areas like this where'd that color go into me snow we might have to put some of that white back and then we'll just trace our trunks back in there because this is all shadow over there Now where I might have some bigger trees in the foreground, I'll simply put some of this there as well. Some of these edges here, as you're coming closer, you can get them breaking up so it looks like there's bigger divots in the snow. Hopefully, not that I've seen divots in the snow, but I know the principle. There, maybe get a nice something sharp there. Just use your artistic license and go for it. Just shadowing all those trees in the bush there back. And when we add our foreground trees, if there's any shadow missing, we can just simply scoot it back in there. Just grabbing your black paint and the liner again, some of those trunks that we might have covered up, just bring back over that snow. And this will really set things back and forth from each other, creating a lot more depth within your work. mainly over the shadowy bits there the white snow bit don't worry and we're just able to bring some of those more forward and backwards from each other now what i want to do here see we've got like uh get one here let's say a, a tree here just sort of ground him down and then bring him up Put another one next to it, right here in this shadow line there. Twist your brush, come right up into the sky here, right up in there. Twist your brush, ink your paint up a bit more if you need to. And get him up out there like so. So I want something about, where's our planet? Do something about here. So come across there, up, up, and up to a point. Get the base always fatter than the higher pieces. Got something weird going there, so I'll truncate that a bit. Get something along here as well, so we want a nice big one now. See how I like to do the branches? You can just come up, 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 stop. Just so they look more woody, naturey. Maybe another one in the shadows here. See the paint's breaking up. I've just added more water. Boom. Look at that. It's so easy.
just before I finish those trees off, while I've got this brush from about here, I wanna A lot of birds just fluttering out of the um, trees there, coming right across the face of the moon, adding more depth to your painting. I'm going to go all the way across here with these, but I'm just putting a few there for now on camera so you get the gist of what I'm doing. They're just little flicks, really, nothing special. I'm just coming along and flicking it down, making some kind of silhouette of tree birds. Look how easy that is, and look at the value it just adds to your painting. I'll stop there. I will add more, but I want to um, fix those closer trees up now. So that's dry. Oh, it's not 100%, but it's mainly dry. Now we've just got to sit those trunks down within their foliage. I'm going to use my little little uh, shrub brush. Now grabbing some Prussian blue again. Where are we? And mixing white with it. We want a lot more white than what we had for the shadow. And we're pretty much going to use this for the foliage on our trees that we just put there. So we'll start with this tree first. Let's try and get a lot of foliage on there. Bringing it around. Don't kill all your trunk that you've just put on there. Get another piece up here. Sinking your trunk back. Where is it that's about here? Put some there. Oh, Keep those brush strokes open. There we go, that'll do, don't overdo it. Uh, we've got some here. Because the birds are behind all this. Get some across the middle of the tree, just like that. Some here, some here and some in the middle of the tree there. When we highlight this, it'll bring the magic. So I'm higher than the actual sticks, see? And then you bring it to your sticks. Just bring it to your sticks. Nice chunk of it around here, coming around there. It's a different color to these background trees. Prussian blue is working good. Maybe something just in the middle of all this. There we go. Look at that, it's so easy, isn't it? Now that colour that you just used, let's grab some white now. We want it pretty much pure white. We'll do it over here. But it's tainted with the Prussian blue. And we want to get this nice and airy, go above that, above it. Sink that back. You're making different clumps of foliage within your branch system there. Go beyond it, over there, in front of all that. Look at my monitor, so, so. Turn your brush around so you're not getting even stamp patterns within your foliage. You don't want that if you can help it. Just the top half of them. I've cleaned the brush and I've just added some pure white just so as I can get some of that right up 
there highlighted. Can I look in my monitor and see a difference here? Yes. So we're getting the actual snow on our foliage there. Just the very top bits. Just put my autograph down here and I want to thank my patrons who get early access to all my content for supporting my channel. Thank you very much. And if you want to become a member of my YouTube channel, simply hit the join tab and get badges and emojis. And give me a comment. Tell me how you found my channel. Do you like it? Do you not like it? All right, let's whack a frame on this and see how she looks. There we go, that's not too shabby, where are we? Something nice, something different, a bit of planetary snow winter scene. I don't know what we'll call it, but we'll call it something. And I know you can do it. Well, that was fun, different and interesting. Beautiful painting, give it a go. And be sure to tell your friends if you like what I'm doing. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Also check out this other video of mine and do subscribe. Goodbye, good luck and good on ya.